So this is part six of unit one. And regarding the filling of orbitals, there's a really cool method uh, to help you decide um, the electron configuration for various um, elements. Um, we're going to use something called Slater's rules. These rules are used as a guide to help you to calculate the shielding uh, constant. Um, I refer you to box 1.5 in the textbook, where essentially what we have is we can calculate the effective nuclear charge as the atomic number minus the shielding constant. Okay, so to determine the shielding constant, there's a set of rules, Slater's rules, which you use to figure out what then becomes the effective nuclear charge. So first of all, you write the electronic substructure in, uh, sorry, the electron structure, the electron configuration in subgroups as shown below. So what you can see here is um, you, will, you will see that we group there's the 1s, this is now the set n, n equals 2, this is now n equals 3, um, now 4 and 5, okay? And electrons in higher groups will, will not shield electrons in the lower groups, obviously. Um, I think you're aware of that. And then here we apply Slater's rules. Okay, so it says for the outermost ns and np valence electrons. Each of the electrons in the ns np is going to be equal to 0.35 of the value of sigma, except for 1s, which becomes 0.30 sigma. For each of the electrons in the n minus 1 shell, we get 0.85 sigma. And then for each of the electrons in n minus 2 shell, we get 1 sigma. Okay, so those are for... Uh, elements that have n, s, and n, p. Now, what happens when we have n, d, and n, f valence electrons? Well, each of the electrons in the n, uh, d, n, f become uh, 0.35 sigma, okay? And then each of the electrons in the lower shells become 1 sigma, like that, okay? So, okay, so let's work with an example so that you can actually see what I'm what I'm going to be referring to. Um, so the question states, confirm that the experimentally observed electron configuration for potassium is given there with the 4s electron filled first before the 3d electron is filled. Okay, so for potassium, the atomic number is 19. Okay, and then um, you'll see that We've got this equation, which is similar to the one I gave you. It's Z star is equal to Z minus sigma. They just This particular textbook just uses a different method. Okay. And we see that the nuclear charge is going to be equal to the atomic number, which is 19 over here. All right. Because we only have, um, in this electron configuration, we have S and P electrons filled only, we apply Slater's rules um, with the S and P electrons um, only. Okay, so the screening constant, we're going to calculate the screening cons constant, which is S or sigma. We see that we have the outer electrons um, must be multiplied by 0 0.85. Okay, so we have the 4S electron, which is 1. Okay, um, we, we don't count that one. Okay, so that's the electron that is, is going to be shielded by the remaining. So if we look at the 3s and 3p, you'll see there's a total of eight electrons, two in the 3s orbital and six in the 3p orbital. We don't count the outer one because that one doesn't feel any shielding. It's only these, these ones that are shielded um, by the inner ones, okay? So that means we have eight electrons that we can multiply by 0 0.85. And then the inner ones, the S, the, 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 the S, S and 1S, 2S and 2P um, electrons, there are 10 of them. So there's two in the 1S, two in the 2S and six in the 2P. Okay. 
And if we work that out, we see that the screening constant, if we calculate 8 times 0.85 plus 10 times 1 gives us 16.8. And if we work out Z effective as 19, which is the atomic number, minus the screening constant of 16.8 that we just calculated is equal to 2.2. Okay, so that's the effective nuclear charge of the inner electrons um, that are screened by the outer electrons. Okay, all right. Now, let's go over here and have a look at the um, other configuration where we have the, um, the D electron that is going to be looked at and the effect of all the other electrons that are going to uh, shield that from the nucleus, shield the 3D electron from the nucleus. Again, we have the same conditions where the um, nuclear charge is the same as the atomic number, which is 19. And then the screening constant is now calculated differently because remember, this is a D electron and what does the rule, Slater's rule state is that all the other electrons in minus one um, must be one, uh, one times sigma. So if we calculate the number of electrons, we've got one is two, two is two, that's four, two P six is 10, um, three is two, 10 and two is 12, and then three P six, 12 and six is 18. Okay, so 18 times one is 18. And if we work out the effective nuclear charge, we get a value of one. So therefore, an electron in the 4s uh, orbital rather than the 3d is under the influence of a greater effective nuclear charge. And in the ground state of potassium, it's the 4s atomic orbital that is occupied preferentially to the 3d orbital. Okay. So we can use Slater's rules and we can justify, uh, first of all, that they work and that they also explain the electron probability curves of the different orbitals. Okay, we do get some exceptions. Remember in first year, you will have known that somehow you saw chromium and copper showing uh, slightly different electron configurations where we would assume that for chromium, we would have 4s2, 3d4. Uh, instead, what we do see is we see that the electron configuration is actually 4s1, 3d5. And the explanation for this is there is special stability of half-filled shells. Okay, so in this case, we've got 4s2, which would imply that the orbital is filled and the spins are opposite, um, but one of the d orbitals is not full. So it, it there's a preference for this one electron to come up like, like that. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to consider both the effect of in, the increasing um, value of Z on 4S and 3D and the electron-electron interactions in the same orbitals. Okay, so um, there, are, there are studied differences in the energy of the orbital with one and two electrons, so we have a look at the pairing energy as well as Hund's rules. And of course, there are some exceptions, as I've said before, um, where the 3D orbitals are usually less shielded than the 4S orbitals. So the energy of the 3D um, orbital is going to decrease faster than the 4S with an increase in atomic number.